In this video, I'm going to go over what you might want to do to help get yourself started in your solo role-playing experience. You've gone through your, all your books. You've decided on what game system you're going to do or use. You sat down, you made your character, if you're playing just one character, or you made your adventuring party, and you're ready to begin. And you're staring at a blank piece of paper. Perhaps you've gone through your collection and started assembling your chart generators, your dungeon generators, your NPC generators, um, your inspiration pictures, your idea generators for quests whatever, and you're just sitting there looking at it all and wondering where you start. By no means, in any way, shape, or form, do you need to take your game to this type of level. I take it to this type of level because I am, for the longest time, I was a DM. So, not only does this help me with my solo role-playing, but these also helps me um, on the rare occasion... Today that I actually get to play with a group. But you got all your stuff. You've chosen your, your, your mechanics. You've brought up your characters. And then you're staring at a blank piece of paper. Here are some suggestions to help get you started. The first thing I will recommend is that you decide on not just the game system, but the setting in which you want to play. Now when I say this, I don't mean you have to go out and buy a big box set that has a setting in it or anything crazy like that. Um, I'm sure if you have any role playing game books whatsoever, most role playing game books come with a pre built setting in it. Um, you can always utilize that or you can make your own. Um, but like I said, it don't have to be this big drawn out, oh, I have to make uh, every little city, every little village, every little dungeon, every little piece of terrain, all the politics, all that. No, you don't have to go through all that. You can just simply say to yourself, you know, I like the Forgotten Realms world. And if you have that material on hand, by all means, use it. But let's say you have the Forgotten Realms stuff on hand. You don't necessarily like that game world, but you like the structure as far as the deities are concerned. You can say, okay, I'm going to play in a setting um, using the Forgotten Realms gods. That's how my clerics and the druids get their spells. Um, you know, Or you can go cannibalize other materials. For example, um, there's a very popular miniatures game called Frostgrave. Now, the Frostgrave setting is nothing more than it was once this big magical city almost everybody had spell casting powers it was this high fantasy giant sprawling metropolis that because of a combination of accident and nature got covered in a ice age and the city got frozen for hundreds and thousands of years and now the ice is thawing and every greedy little wizard is hiring everybody they can to run out to this little city and try to claim the treasure. It could be something as simple as that. Um, Rangers of Shadow Deep, also created by the same person who made Frostgrave. If you have that particular solo, that's actually a solo miniatures game. The whole setting fits in a paragraph like this. Basically, there's this big encroaching, darkening mist that's just taking over the world. You can you just, that could be it. That could just be your setting. You're in a world where this mist is encompassing the world. Um, of course, you can always go to your handy dandy generators and see what you can come up with. Um, there, just choose a setting. It don't have to be grandiose, just enough to get you started. Uh, for my particular next foray into role-playing solo, I will be using my newest um, my newest acquirement here, newest thing I got, uh, the Forbidden Lands, because I plan on doing a 
solo hex crawl. And this game is designed as a solo hex crawl, and the particular setting it has is perfect for a hex crawl. Most of my charts, most of everything I need will be from this set. On the rare occasion that I do need, you know, some outside help, I'm sure if you've been on my uh, video channel for a while, you've seen me talk about these. If you haven't seen that video yet, go ahead and look back on my channel. It was the first video I ever did. Um, I will also be utilizing these cards as my oracle whenever I need my oracle to come into play. Now, once you've chosen your setting, the next thing you're going to want to do is choose your starting point. If you have ever been a game master before, think of it like this. Forget that you're playing solo. Pretend that you are making an adventure for a group of your friends. Where are you going to start them? Are you going to start them in town, in a village? Are they going to meet at, the, you know, the old cliche of meeting at the tavern? Or are you just going to assemble the party, and when they all sit down at the table, you're going to say, okay, y'all have traveled, you're now in front of the dungeon, and begin from there. That's purely up to you. Now that you've got your setting, and you've decided on how to start, be like, start off being as a GM, and create that starting point. Um, I will be using the Forbidden Lands, because... Um, Forbidden Lands has inside it three um, pre-made adventure sites. One for a village, one for a castle, and one for a dungeon. The game suggests that um, you start at um, the village they created. Now, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to spoil anything for you. But what I did decide was I want my people to start in this village. This will be their home base. This will be the start of their hex crawl. So I went into here. I decided, since I've already decided I'm using the setting, I have the setting ready. And then I used those charts to kind of generate for me a simple village. And here's my little notebook that I'm going to keep track of everything in. I got my character handy. All five of them. I haven't decided if I'm going to make a sixth one yet. That's still up in the air. I got my character sheets. And then I made this little village. There's a little map of it. I am not an artist in any way, shape, or form. But I rolled on the charts. It was built during the blood mist. It was ruled by a sorcerer who seems confused. Has had a ser this, this village has had a serious problem with bandits. It's known for its wondrous breads and pastries. Cattle wander aimlessly. And that was all generated using the pre-generated charts. It then gives you a uh, you roll for some notable institutions. I've got a mill, an inn, a trading post, a temple, a forester. And when I looked at my characters... I had made a dwarf character, and I'm like, you know, dwarves really aren't farmers, so I decided to add a smith, which is, and I put a little note here, run by the three, three dwarf families in town. There was also a legend generator in there. So just in grins, for grins and giggles, I went ahead and rolled up a legend. And it says, during the Adder Wars, there was a scared king who sought a map, out of sense of duty, who traveled far away to some marshlands northwest, who took his own life. That location held a powerful artifact. The area is controlled by a death knight. And I'm like, okay. And then I looked up here at, when I rolled, that the village had a serious problem with bandits. I'm like, okay, why would the village have a problem with bandits? Well, we've, for whatever reason, we've got these cattle that wander around aimlessly. And then when I made the smith shop and drew up the map, I went into um, one of my random tables to see what exactly are they smithing. And that maybe they're next to a mine. 
So I asked my oracle, by chance, is is there a mine entrance nearby? Is that where the smiths are getting their materials? And it came up, yes. And then I got silver. So I'm like, you know, okay. The bandits, they're attacking the town because they're after the cattle for food. And they're after the silver, of course. I thought, okay, that, that sounds pretty good. And then I looked at this legend. When I looked at the legend, I was like, you know, this could be the beginning of a story arc that will expand the whole, the whole, all the, all the, basically a campaign, basically. It's going to be the backdrop behind everything these adventurers do. So, it, I, after looking all at, at all this, I'm like, okay, the party has been living in this village for the longest time. Um, they've got a problem with bandits. They've all heard this legend. And now it's starting to come together that the party, through their regular daily interactions in the village, have decided to come together to unite and take care of the problem with the bandits with a further goal of down the line of tracking down what this was with the scared king, what was the map about, um, what, what is this uh, powerful artifact, and then, of course, they know, according to legend, that there's a death knight. So they'll be prepared, or at least as prepared as they possibly can be, um, when the time comes. So as it sits, just using my regular generation tables and a little bit of, you know, DM skills, I've got a backdrop. I've got the story coming together for how these adventurers came to, are coming together. They have an immediate problem they have they have to solve, and now they've got a long-term goal. Um, there is a guy, very popular video um, YouTube channel, who paints miniatures, and he always gives people advice on painting miniatures. One of his videos is simply entitled, Why Don't You Just Start? And in that video, he was explaining, you know, you, they people who paint miniatures have the same problem. They sit down, they got their miniatures, they got their paint, and they don't know what to do. And he says, you know what? Just start. Well, guys, that's what I'm telling you to do. Sit down and just start. That's all you need to do. Give yourself a backdrop with the setting. Roll something up on whatever chart generation system you use. And you will have a background basis to start your solo campaign. Um, if you're just doing a standard uh, kick the door down, kill the monsters, take their stuff, a dungeon crawl like that, then you don't need to worry about all this. You can go grab your copy of D100 or go grab a book that has your dungeon generator in it and go to town. But if you're looking to add some type of narrative to your solo role playing, you've got a good place to start just by utilizing whatever resources you already have at hand. That was one of the reasons why I like this Forgotten Lands setting. The Forgotten Lands product itself is designed as a DM taking the PCs on a dungeon crawl. All you got to do is now wear both shoes with this particular game and you can do a solo dungeon crawl. All the charts you need are in here. Everything you, you know, all the basics to start. The only thing it doesn't have that a solo role player will need is some type of oracle. And you can go online, um, you know, check out the mythic. Um, Scarlet Heroes has one, uh, Drive Through RPG, RPG Now, all those other type of websites have a ton of different ways of creating oracles. Or you can just sit down with a pencil and piece of paper and just simply write out your own. You know, uh, if you're playing a D6 game, make a D6 system. If your dice are D10, you're doing a D10 type system, a percentile system. Make a D, you know, a D10 chart and just go from there and you should be ready to rock and roll. 
All right. Um, if you have any other questions or anything, feel free to post them in the comments. And until the next video, happy gaming.